Hello, I'm Dr. Lisa Fortuna, Medical Director and Faculty at Boston University School of Medicine. I'm a bicultural psychiatrist who has treated many Latino and Hispanic patients. I would like to share a few best practices when treating this population. Latinos or Hispanics in the United States is a fast-growing population, expanding from a small, regionally concentrated group of fewer than 6 million in 1960 to a now widely dispersed population of well more than 50 million, or 16% of the nation's estimated 350 million. Latinos are a diverse community. There are a lot of misconceptions and stereotypes about who Latinos are and about the history and presence of Latinos in the United States. For example, Spanish is the official language spoken throughout Latin America, but not all Latinos speak Spanish. Latinos are a multiracial, multicultural group with origins in South and Central America and parts of the Caribbean. Latinos include indigenous people who speak their own native tongues. For example, the language Quechua is spoken primarily in the Andes. Each Latino group faced a unique immigration experience to the U.S., which influenced the community and contextualizes their assessment and treatment. For example, political turmoil in Latin America during the 1970s and 80s, particularly in the Central American nations of El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua, contributed to significant new Latin American immigration to the U.S in the 1970s and 1980s. An unprecedented wave of migrants from Central America, many of them undocumented, have fled the violence of their homelands to enter the U.S. The prevalence of mental health problems vary amongst Latino subgroups and are a reflection of the diversity of experiences and circumstances. Culture has an impact on symptom presentation. For example, ataques de nervios, or attack of the nerves is a cultural bound syndrome of distress. And there also is a propensity for certain symptoms, such as dissociative symptoms, among less acculturated Latinos who have experienced trauma. Latino immigrants are at risk for traumatic exposure, both before and after migration, PTSD, depression, and stress associated with the immigration experience and the challenges of integration versus marginalization in the U.S. For example, unaccompanied refugee minors from the growing Central American exodus have high rates of traumatic exposure, PTSD, or anxiety. Best practices for working with Latinos includes using a biopsychosocial cultural model of evaluation and treatment. Take the time to develop a cultural formulation which includes a consideration for acculturation, community, and family connection, immigration status, history, or education. Supporting collaborative care with Latinos is important for retention and success of care. Although this is a culture that respects authority, feeling misunderstood and not connected to a therapist often results in dropping out from treatment. For Latinos, Having a mental illness is stigmatizing. Poor access to care due to low rates of insurance, immigration status, language and cultural barriers in healthcare, which can include differences between provider patients in explanatory models of illness and families as the gatekeepers can limit entry into care. Spirituality and religiosity are also important frames through which mental health is understood and addressed by many Latinos and visions of spirits and angels does not necessarily imply psychosis. Remember that despite the challenges, Latinos are a growing academic, political, and financial force in the U.S. A future filled with quality treatment, prevention, and early intervention for Latinos will be best achieved by following six strategies, community partnerships, culturally and linguistically appropriate treatment, workforce development to sustain a culturally and linguistically competent mental health workforce, and community outreach and engagement. For more information, visit the APA's website for a lengthier discussion on Latino mental health.
an educational resource for providers. I'm Dr. Lisa Fortuna, and this concludes our introduction to best practices for treating Latino patients.